Hello, Melrose. This is Mayor Paul Broder. I'm taking a break from my regular update on COVID-19 to talk about a very important issue that is really highlighted in terms of struggle in, uh, in, this, in this current time um, during the pandemic. And I'm talking about uh, recovery and access to the services that those folks need uh, to help themselves along. And I have recruited to, uh, to the effort, uh, at least to come to Melrose, Paul Hammersley. Paul is with the, he wears a lot of hats, I should say, but he's with the Malden Board of Health. And most importantly, from my perspective, he is also the head of Malden Overcoming Addiction, which is a grassroots uh, uh, organization that he started, I'm gonna guess about three years ago. Uh, I'll let Paul talk to you a little bit about that. Paul, welcome back to Melrose. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's an honor to be here. And, and yes, I, I am the president of Malden Overcoming Addiction, and I also work out of the uh, health department for the city of Malden as the Addiction Recovery Resource Specialist. Um, Malden Overcoming Addiction was started roughly 2014, about six years ago, and then we became a nonprofit in uh, 2015. And we've just, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of things that we're doing right now. There's a lot going on, especially during this COVID-19. Um, there's a lot of resources that folks may not know about or that they need. So I'm just happy to be here and I'm honored to be on your show. So that's what I would like to, to focus on is um, in, in, in the recovery community, I know how important it is to be able to have meetings and to have peer-to-peer -peer contact. It's the foundation of a lot of programs that help a lot of people. And with social distancing and the obstacles that presents, can you tell me about how that impacts folks that traditionally use those meetings to help themselves along? Yeah, so the social distancing is, um, it, it's making things very tricky. And uh, there's many people right now that are, are struggling and having a hard time. The relapse rate is, is kind of going up. It's the numbers aren't working in our favor. And what that simply means is um, people in recovery need peer-to-peer -peer contact. They need to be around other folks. Um, such as like a, whether it's an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, a Narcotics Anonymous meeting, maybe a Gamblers Anonymous meeting, whatever may be ailing you, um, folks really need that human interaction. And so right now, everything is online. So there is a lot of meetings going on on Zoom, um, WebEx. There's, there's just different, whatever group you may have, those particular groups are, have now switched to being online, but people are just home and they're isolated and it's just not good for people that are that are in recovery because again uh, like i said before everybody needs that human contact so folks can have access to some of those resources but in a but in a different way and i know you're not suggesting that it's the same um, but it is important so how do folks go about making those connections either that are used to the routine of the regular meeting that they go to or perhaps are a little are newer in the process and are just starting to figure it out. What's the best way for them to find their way? So you said it quite a few things, um, and I'm I'd like to put it out there. I'm also a man in long term recovery, so I I also do the the Zoom meetings. I still need to have that human interaction, and I still need to to be in meetings. Um, so what what I've done is. I've searched, you, you literally, you go online and whether it's Facebook and you could do it on your phone or you could do it on your home computer, you simply have to just search um, whether it's in Google and you just ask for, for whatever meeting you may want to go to, you can punch it in, what are the Zoom meetings for whatever anonymous you're looking for and they're going to come up. And simply if you just ask on, if you put an ask out on Facebook, everybody will send you links and it is different, it is, um, it, it, you know, no one likes change, but you're sitting in front of a computer and you may be looking at 16 people. Some are on video, some may be on the phone. You don't have to be on video. It's your choice. Um, but it's still a meeting. They still work and it's still very helpful. But for right now, we just have to continue helping each other. And I do suggest if you have people's phone numbers that you're contacting each other, you're staying in contact, you're still asking for help. You're doing what you have to do. You're getting enough sleep. You're eating properly. You're exercising. All of these things really make a difference in your own personal recovery. So, Paul, another thing that um, is important for folks to understand is um, I know you know the person in recovery um, often has a support system outside of the meeting or other resources like that. How can you know 
loved ones, folks you live with, whoever the case may be, uh, help, help support folks that don't have access to the traditional meeting anymore. And again, so if, you know, if, if there may be a, a person in recovery in your home, you are not in recovery, but you may be living with someone in recovery, you, you know, we, we encourage people to give as much support as they can to that person, you know, maybe asking that person, have you went to an online meeting today? Kind of just supporting that person right where they're at, making sure that person is eating right, making sure that person is getting enough sleep and, and really just trying to interact with, with, with your loved one um, as much as you possibly can. And also watch for the signs. If the behavior is off, if somebody may not be eating, you can tell they're not sleeping, they're looking different. That's when you might want to, you know, maybe contact someone if you think that you're per the person in your life may be taking a turn for the worse. You might want to contact someone to just talk to the person in your home. Um, recovery coaching is still going on. If you have a recovery coach or if you know of a recovery coach or if you don't, contact any facility that offers those services. All the facilities right now are still up and running by phone. There's, you know, everything is by phone right now. You might get a hold of someone who's willing to meet with you, um, but all the services are still up and running and everyone is still given resources where to go. There is still a lot going on out there and I just emphasize to contact anyone in the field to help a person in recovery. And Paul, you said something that I think is, is important to stress is that we were talking really about a particularly uh, particular segment of the recovery journey. Um, but what about things like um, detox services, um, you know, beds, things that are a little bit more, you know, a little bit more serious intervention? Are those things still available to folks right now? Yes, detox services are still open right now. Um, that nothing is closed down for, for help um, such as a detox or a CSS or for the treatment to a TSS because those services fall under almost like a hospital setting because there are nurses and there are professionals on board who can take your temperature and, and, and test you for, again, whatever, if, if you are sick, someone can, can um, come to your assistance. But again, they are open. It is tougher to get a bed because right now a lot of folks are struggling and the beds are full but they are still open. We are still placing people and the help is still out there. And again, we, we also touched upon the idea that, that um, sometimes folks that are in recovery need a, um, need, need a basket of support sometimes in terms of um, food insecurity or other connections like that. How do folks connect in to those other services that are also really important to make sure you're, you're staying on the recovery path? And, and the food services are still open. I know that Bread of Life, and I, I see a lot of other services still up and running, but where people are struggling, I, we talked about this earlier, and that's the homeless. The homeless, are, that population is still struggling. Um, you know, whether it was certain churches that might have been open, given a nightly meal, and that's where people were eating their nightly meals, and they might have been bringing food in, such as canned items that we don't even think about that need can openers, and certain things that the... the um, the church might help them with. All those places are no longer open. So if you know someone that's homeless, please check on that person. Um, the, again, all the food services are there, but the homeless people are really struggling at this particular time with what's going on with COVID-19. So one thing that I know Malden Overcoming Addiction does amazingly well is identify and make available resources. Uh, as we wrap up, can you talk about uh, what's on your website, how to access it. We'll make sure it's on the screen after, but if you can give folks an idea about how they can go about navigating this situation, that'd be a huge help to our, to our viewers. So if, you wanna, if you're looking for any resources, you can go to MaldenOvercomingAddiction.com or you can call 781-838-2203. Um, there's recovery coaches available. There are people to walk you through whatever may be ailing you to, to help you in, and to give you the resources you may need, whatever that looks like, but we are here. Um, there's a scholarship program on the website to see if you fit that criteria. You can go on and click the link under resources. Um, this, we are available, all the resources are still here. We are not closed, everything is open. Just check out MaldenOvercomingAddiction.com. You can go to our Facebook page to, to see what is the latest and greatest. We update it um, almost daily. Um, and again, we, we're open, we're here, and we're here to help anybody who may need us. 
Well, Paul, I want to thank you very much again for crossing the border, coming over to Melrose. Uh, your, your, your commitment uh, and your passion around this is outstanding, and your, and your commitment, even, even as the rules change along the way, you know, you're a tremendous resource, not only in Malden, but throughout the region. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to come share some of this important information with the people of Melrose. Thank you.